Hey, it's Chris. Welcome to a different sort of iPad tips video. While most iPad tips videos kind of focus on settings and checking out the latest features, today we're gonna to focus on something way more practical, just getting the most out of your iPad, maximizing your investment, whether you're a longtime iPad user or you're just getting started, I'm gonna help you realize the full potential of this awesome machine by helping you figure out how to use it in ways you may not have considered. Before we're off to the races, I have to say, I love the way that the new course is turning out. It's called Pro iPhone Video Essentials, and if you pre-order it today, I'm gonna give you not just learning to be productive, but my Freeform Unleashed course for free instantly as well. So check out that deal, it's linked up in the description. Tip number one is that you should fully embrace widgets. Now, I say that as somebody who's always recommending amazing iPad apps, right? I've given you so many apps over the years, but a lot of people just download the app and start using it and don't go digging around to see what widgets they just added with those downloads. Now, I've got some of the usual widgets that you may have, like Apple Notes and Apple Music, right? But I also have some really interesting ones here just to demo this. I can start my Pomodoro sessions right here. I can easily see how much of the day is left. Right when I'm filming this, 60% of the day is gone already. That's very motivating. I've got a widget here that lets me save any copied link with just a tap into that software. And I've also got one here that just keeps important things in front of me. Things like passwords or image dimensions, things that I need to reference all the time that are gonna be a pain for me to look up later. And I've got all that stuff just kind of hanging out here like this powerful dashboard for me. I think a lot of people forget about widgets. They just assume it's all of Apple's kind of out of the box widgets and they don't go looking for the widgets from the apps that they use and they're really missing out. Let's not forget that Apple allows developers to make their widgets interactive now. It's nice because if you're using something like Reminders, for instance, you can actually just tap to check off a reminder without even have to fire up the actual full app, save you a bunch of time, and it won't break your flow. Multifunctional accessories can greatly enhance your iPad experience by serving multiple purposes. Think about it like compound exercises when it comes to weightlifting, for instance. Some exercises work multiple muscle groups, so you kind of kill multiple birds with one stone. Moft has an amazing iPad accessory called the Snap Float Folio, and it's the perfect example of a multifunctional accessory because not only does it offer protection for your iPad, but it's also a really unique iPad stand as well. And not only is it a unique iPad stand, this is an iPad stand with multiple viewing angles baked right into it. My favorite is the one that lifts it way off the desk for you. So you can take this to the coffee shop and not end up with tech neck having to look way down, but it brings it more up right where you're gonna be looking. Unlike the old design, there's a seamless combination of case and folio. And that integrated design ensures your iPad will never slip out. Combined with the enhanced edge protection, which you're not gonna get in the Magic Keyboard, and the fact that it's lighter than the previous generation, pairs perfectly with your thin, sleek M4 iPad, and that makes the setup ultra easy to carry with you wherever you go. But there's this focus mode if you just wanna prop it up and have it on the desk in front of you or next to your Mac. There's also a drawing mode that has a slight angle, which I think makes you more precise, and it's also more comfortable if you're using the Apple Pencil. This is really cool if you wanna use it with Sidecar, but on top of all of that, it's still multifunctional because it has this optional, meaning you can remove it, pencil holder. So if I go and throw this in my tech bag then, I don't have to worry about this coming off. It's great that the new Apple Pencil has Find My built in, but I don't wanna have to use it. And with this, I find myself really not losing my Apple Pencil like I used to. Have you ever seen a more versatile stand? I mean, it's versatile on top of versatile on top of versatile. I love this thing. Here's a big tip for you also. Consider creating an iPad first or iPad driven iPad anchored desk setup. A lot of people kind of just use the iPad either as just a companion device for the Mac or as something that they just plop down on their desk and just use with a keyboard, like the Magic Keyboard, which there's nothing against that. That works great. But the iPad has come such a long way, especially the iPad Pro. You can connect this to an external display, something like the studio display, and make a really nice go of it. And it's not just about the extra screen real estate, okay? I know a lot of people will be like, that's overkill to get the studio display for an iPad, even the Pro but it actually isn't because aside from having more room visually to look at, the studio display is a hub. It's got all these extra ports and it's one of the easiest ways to connect extra things like extra drives to an iPad. Now, caveat, is it for everybody to have an iPad first, iPad anchored desk setup? No, it's not. But for a lot of people, way more than you would think, 
that's a perfectly viable setup. Not only does it look clean, but it plays into the iPad's versatility because if you're using something like the Magic Keyboard, you can type, you can use the trackpad, but then you can rip the screen off, grab the Apple Pencil, and sign a document really easily with your actual signature or make some handwritten notes, do some sketching, put it right back on there and get right back to work, sometimes without even unplugging it from the studio display itself. The external display experience for the iPad is a lot more robust than tech reviewers have made it out. I'm not saying that it's perfect. Apple can tweak and tune some things, let you open up more windows or apps at a time. I get it. But I don't mind telling you either that I really enjoy using my iPad Pro with the studio display. And yes, I can get by without a Mac with exactly that setup. So useful, almost as useful as all the tips that you could pick up if you go to my new channel, Side Unseen, which is linked up down below, where I've been interviewing people like Tom from Byte Review. He's got a lot of great tips on his aesthetic, creating content, et cetera. So check it all out. That's linked up down below too. Speaking of things you're gonna love, you're gonna love the Daily Tech Wallpaper Packs linked up down below, especially the coupon for the Mega Pack, which gets you all the wallpapers, hundreds of files for five bucks. That leads me into the next tip, and that's to try the iPad in tablet mode more than you probably do. So I don't know about you, but I default to bringing around my Magic Keyboard with me everywhere that I go. And it's kind of like when I visualize using the iPad, I'm visualizing using it with this. But one of my favorite things to do recently is to grab my iPad, even at my desk, and rip it off the keyboard and just kind of use it vertically for a change where I can go to a website and actually scroll up and down. And if I need to type something, I'll just voice it using dictation. And guess what? That works really, really well. But I still have the ability to screenshot things and mark stuff up. Actually, I do that more often when I'm in this mode. It just makes me a little bit more versatile in the way that I'm working, you know, the mode, the mindset, but also in my actual work, I would say. It's just something to try, I say, because when your fingers aren't occupied with resting on a keyboard and thinking about using a trackpad, you're more prone to get in there and use that touchscreen, pinch and zoom and highlight stuff with your finger, drag and drop. So many people buy a tablet and then underutilize all the tablet features and that's ridiculous. And I, that was me for a really long time too until I was like, no, I'm gonna force myself to use this in a different way. And really all I did was end up enjoying my iPad a thousand percent more. Here's something I want you to be aware of. Right now, I'm looking at the productivity section of the App Store. And you can see there's so many different productivity apps. There's to-do lists, there's calendars, there's task planners. And your mission, should you choose to accept it, if you actually want to be productive, is to pick an app and run with it. Be consistent. Here's why. It's you doing the actual work that ultimately matters. And sure, new apps do come out all the time, and I know I'm always introducing you to them, which, by the way, you should get subscribed if you really like discovering new iPad apps. But at some point, a notes app is a notes app, and a focus timer is a focus timer. A calendar is a calendar. You get what I'm saying. What you want to avoid is shiny app syndrome, because all these different great things compound the more you use a particular app. Now, sometimes you have to switch because apps maybe change up their pricing structure or they lose features or an upgrade breaks them or a developer forgets about them. But let's say you find a habit tracking app and you love it and you've spent years in it. You've got your streaks going. Everything's all set up. If a new app comes out and has different visuals, maybe you like the visuals better, but you don't have all your history in that app, you can see it's going to be a huge time suck and a big setback to break all those streaks, to have to re-input a bunch of stuff. And in the end, it turns out you probably should have just stuck with what you were working with already. So apps are just tools and tools are not you. At some point, you're the thing that's irreplaceable and the apps are just there to support you. Now, my next tip is something that might kind of throw you for a loop and that is to treat the iPad as hostile with a little hostility. When you don't just treat the iPad as this amazing, magnificent piece of technology, but something that like your iPhone can distract you can keep you from being focused, can stop you from being productive, then you can start to think about how to mitigate those distractions. And yeah, that could mean that you use some built-in tools like focus modes that can help you kind of filter out a lot of those notifications or opportunities to get out of your flow. Maybe you'll install some apps. I've covered a lot of those in my app series, which can lock down your iPad a little bit and keep you from getting into social media or just browsing the web mindlessly, checking the news all the time, watching videos. I know it sounds weird, but shifting the way you perceive the iPad as something that has the ability to keep you from doing your work rather than thinking of it as something that's definitely going to help you get more done will actually help you get more done, which leads me to the next tip. Think of the iPad as 
flexible. Try not to think of it in super rigid terms where it's like you always use it in the same spot or for the same thing, just for gaming or just for art. Before Universal Control came around and all we had was Sidecar to use this with your Mac, I thought of this as a Mac companion, something that goes with the Mac but doesn't ever usurp the Mac's place in my lineup for any of my tasks or projects. But that's definitely not how I think about it these days. I think about it a little bit more fluidly. Whenever I need to do something, I still maintain that the iPad and the Mac are better together. I know that's a whole separate debate. We've talked about it many, many times, but I think about the iPad in a very fluid way these days, meaning whenever I have to do a task, I just go for the tool that's right for the job. Sometimes it's the iPad and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's the Mac. Sometimes it's neither of those and it's just my iPhone or dictating something on my Apple Watch in ultra focus mode with zero distractions. The next tip that I have for you is to customize everything that you can. Now, there's a million examples. I'm just gonna give you one. I've got the new Apple Pencil Pro here. And it's got a new feature. I can squeeze it to make things happen on the iPad. So if I'm in Apple Notes here, I can squeeze it to get this menu but if I go into my Apple Pencil settings, there's an opportunity for me to customize what happens when I use that squeeze gesture. I can show the tool palette like I have it set up, or I can switch between the current tool and the eraser, or between the current tool and the last used tool. I can show the color palette. I can turn it off. And this is the setting that I love the most here since we're talking about it. I can customize the sensitivity because I actually found that I was pressing it on accident too many times when I was trying to write. And so I actually found that I want it to be a little bit tougher to press and that really changed up how much I enjoyed, number one, handwriting with that new squeeze functionality. I wasn't accidentally activating it, but then how useful that squeeze functionality is because it's very intentional now and everything just flows. Now you can get in and customize all kinds of things. Of course, you can dive into shortcuts and a lot of people just miss out on the shortcuts that are there in the gallery that don't really take up any extra cognitive space to just add them to your shortcuts. You can customize what's going on in your control center, especially with iPad OS 18. You got all these new screens to customize. Customize your focus modes, customize your files app and the way that's arranged and organized. If you just use the iPad as it is straight out of the box, yeah, it works, but it doesn't work for you. It kind of works against you because Apple's tweaked and tuned things to just be kind of useful out of the box to a wide range of people, but you're not people, you're you. And you have specific likes and dislikes and things that are gonna help you and things that are gonna hinder you. The more you take time to personalize and customize your iPad, the more you're gonna get out of it. Here's a big tip for you. Don't neglect the iPad's camera. Here's the thing, the iPad's camera is often underrated especially among tech reviewers here on YouTube, who basically put out the vibe that you're really stupid if you ever even think about using the camera on an iPad. But the reality is the iPad's camera can be super useful to you, especially if you're indoors in a controlled setting, maybe in your office, let's say. When you use the camera, you have a bigger viewfinder because it's the whole screen, and it lets you shoot, edit, and publish photos and videos all from the same device without having to do things like airdropping files. It's really, really convenient. This is just good life advice in general, I guess, but stop caring what other people think and just do what works. So that actually seems like a really great place to wrap things up here. I know this is a very different sort of tips video than you're probably used to here on YouTube, but hopefully that's why it was valuable. We weren't just getting into, hey, check out this little setting or this little beta update or you know this little feature inside of some niche area in the OS. That stuff can be valuable and I'll probably cover that again soon. But if you wanna get the most out of the iPad, it really takes thinking about it a little bit differently and having somebody that uses it all the time be like, here's how I've gotten some extra mileage out of my iPad. And hopefully that's what you came away with in today's video. Everything I talked about today is linked up down in the description. Go check out the MOF stand, it's really excellent. I don't feature things here unless they're actually really cool in real life. Check out the pre-order for Pro iPhone Video Essentials. When do you get a deal like this? Three courses for the price of one. It's ridiculous, I'm not gonna do that ever again. Also, obviously, don't forget to hit subscribe. For some reason, if I don't actually say it, the numbers of subscriptions go down. It's like people need a, a reminder, I guess. So here's your reminder, get subscribed. I'll catch you in the next video, later.